Meguiar's claims this is their most durable wax or paint protectant they've ever created and they even lab tested it to prove it. But is that true? That's what we're going to look at in this video. This is a first look at the Meguiar's ultimate ceramic coating uh, and we will get into the label and has this peel back label and everything that they've tried to do to uh, protect themselves from a torture test. All that and more coming up in this video. So this has cured for about seven days, which when I talked with Marcus is how much time they want it to cure. It doesn't say that on the label, but that's what he said. So seven days later, now I will say, I already did this once before, but I used a new soap that I hadn't used before and it pretty much killed it. So I reapplied, stripped the panel, reapplied it, waited an additional seven days. So I'm hoping that it was the soap before and is not the product. So I'm interested to see how it does. So let's look at the water behavior. Super strong, looks great as expected. So when you just, when you just apply it, that's what it'll look like. And the nice part about water beading is when the water beads up, say after a rain or something like that, say you just wash your car, the water beads up, then you drive off, your car will remain dry. All right, so now let's just wash it. For washing, I'm using a neutral soap. This is uh, one of my favorite soaps, to be honest, Pure Wash. And for the wash mitt, I'm just gonna use one of these towels. So I have one, probably about two ounces of soap in here. And me personally, I just like using microfiber towels as wash mitts. This is where the test went south last time though, when I just started washing it. So I'm hoping, again, it was the soap, not the Meguiar's product, I should say. And it doesn't look like it, it looks like it's repelling soap. I never thought I'd have to start with just car washing in the torture test. But after that ceramic coating that didn't do good, I thought I'd have to start. L looks, looks just about the same. It did look slightly different to me up on the front side of the panel. So what I'm gonna do is just wash it one more time just to see. It does see, it does seem to be kind of resisting the soap a little bit, which is a really, really good thing. So I'm just gonna wash it a second time to see if we get any change in water behavior. So this soap traditionally, the reason why I picked this soap in general is that it has not broken down any coatings or sealants or anything. It's just been a very, very good clean soap. So let's get that one off. So this is similar to what was happening, not as bad, but it, the protection is already being broken down with just the car wash soap. So it wasn't as bad as the first time I shot it. So that other soap did break it down, but you could see that already compared to just the initial water beading behavior is different after just two car washes. So this is the result after two car washes. So it is, already starting to break down, which is a bit disappointing. So on one hand, I'm always excited when a product breaks down quick because then it makes it easier for me to reset the panel, but then I don't like it for the product, right? So see. Let's use, this is the Griot's Garage, Griot's Garage. This is just their iron remover. And when I compared it to actually, switch that up. Let's use Meguiar's. This is, I did, actually did a video comparing the Griot's Garage to the Meguiar's and the Meguiar's outbeat the Griot's Garage by far. So if you're looking for an iron mover, this all wheel cleaner is a really good iron mover. It was a little better when it was cheaper, when it was around $8, but it is around $15 now. But nonetheless, it's a really, really good iron mover. I like the foaming capabilities of it, and it does really good at drawing out the iron contaminants, and is a really good Meguiar's product. So I'm not gonna rub it in, but this is a product that would frequently be used on paintwork. So I feel like that's pretty common. If it does start to withstand these, uh, we'll move into rubbing it in, but for now, we're just gonna kinda let it sit and dwell on the surface for a little bit. And again, these torture test videos are kinda, subscriber mentioned it, these are like the crash test, like they do for cars. This is the crash test uh, equivalent for products. So though you may never actually spray these products on top of your car, we need to know the limitations and to the extremes that we could take these products. So that's what, that's what these videos are all about. So infotainment, if you will.
Looks like it came back a little bit, huh, Bryant? So let's wash it to remove any residue. Maybe it got clogged. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So the iron remover, and it should. Any good, any good paint protection should make it through at least an iron remover being sprayed on the surface. That should not be that crazy. What is a little weird and a little crazy is it seems like we're getting some that soap is kind of degrading it more than anything. So I'll make sure I do a really thorough rinse and then I'll doctor the water a little bit. So there you go. So we're getting some uneven degradation of the product and you'll see that with the blower. With the blower, you will see that the water gets a lot stickier in the areas. So though everyone wants water sheeting or they say they want water sheeting, people don't actually want water sheeting, they want water beading because when you have water beading, the surface gets a lot drier quicker actually. So like right here, you can see, shouldn't have stopped. All right, let's um, hit it with Hyperfoam. So Hyperfoam wheel, uh, wheel cleaner and tire prep. This is again for a consumer grade, actually for any grade. This is a, another phenomenal product that uh, my sprayer's broken. Having a rough go here, guys. No worries, I keep some on deck. So this is a pH of 12, I think. So though you wouldn't, sorry, Brian. Though you wouldn't spray this on your wheel tire paint. Hello. I wouldn't spray this on your paint. It's kind of interesting that the soap seems to be affecting it. That soap doesn't leave residue. It even talks about how it doesn't leave residue. Yeah, because this soap even talks about their slickest, swirl resistant, peach neutral wash, amazing scent, delivers thick cleaning foam that's easy to rinse, cleans without stripping protection. So I don't know why something weird happening with the soap at all, but that's also consistent with what was happening last time in the test, which is why I stripped it and redid it. But and it's definitely hanging on. So let's get that instead of the wet towel, we'll use the soap again. Definitely hanging on. It's definitely breaking down, but it's definitely hanging on. I do have a suspicion though that if we rub it in, it's gonna take care of it. But nonetheless, it's hanging on. This is really cool where spray paint protectants have gotten so much better than in years past and better than some wipe-on coatings even. So. so I'll be honest, not super impressive, not terrible, still hanging on. One thing that's been really cool to watch though is we've been really able to see how the product is breaking down. So on first you know, water behavior test, really nice tight water beads all over the place, but then you wash it once and it starts breaking down kind of at the top of the panel. And then you wash it again and it's breaking down over here. Then you and here it's like still here, still here, still here for some reason, <laughs> still here, but pretty much gone everywhere else, which is kind of fascinating. So let's blow this off. All right, so it is kind of sticking. Let's go to uh, Bleach White. Bleach White, not the best tire cleaner, honestly. I would uh, much rather pick the Turtle Wax tire cleaner, but this is cheap, so if you need a cheap tire and wheel cleaner. So the product, you spray the iron remover on it, then you rinse the product off and it doesn't look as bad, and then you wash it, and it looks worse after the wash. So I'm almost wondering if you're stripping the residue from like the iron remover cleaner, maybe that's leaving a residue and then with the wash, we're removing all that. And so after the wash, we're actually getting the true look of what the product is like. And so, and honestly, that's what you're gonna do at home is that's, you're gonna get an after wash look. So anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. That product is all but dead to me. So what is it? Let's wash it though. So what does this mean? This means this product, this Meguiar's product is a mid-range product, which is probably why they put it in the ultimate line. It's gonna be good for the general consumer who wants to get, you know, put some quote unquote ceramic protection on their car. At 25 bucks, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones. I think a better product, honestly, if you wanna to stick to the Meguiar's line, a better product is gonna be their uh, hybrid ceramic or ceramic hybrid, whatever the term is, but their quick detail spray. Not the blue bottle stuff, the quick detail spray, and I'll try to link it below. But that quick detail spray has actually been really, really durable, arguably more durable than this. They have it labeled as a quick detail spray, but that's one of my go-to products, so. There you go, it's just pretty much all but dead, but let's do, um, let's blow it off and see. Still hanging on right here for some reason, but you can just see how the water is just not going anywhere. It's just like, 
happen. So it's gonna be hard to get that, all that off. Let's go uh, again with the hyperfoam right there, and this time we're gonna rub it in. Let's do hyperfoam, rub it in, see if we can kind of kill it. But so this product is like, I wouldn't say it's not a terrible product. It's a good product. It's fair for what it is. It is fair. I'm a little embarrassed to see it dying with just a car wash, uh, with just a car wash soap, like on those first two washes. So realistically, I think you're gonna get, in the real world, if you want like a real world number, you're gonna get two to three months worth of protection out of this product. You may not be able to make it through a crazy rainstorm, or you may not make it through winter, but when it does have some of those like filling capabilities a little bit, but I think it's a, I think it's a decent product. Would I have it in my repertoire? Would I reach for it? I don't think I'm reaching for it, but that's just me. But it's not as bad as some of the other spray sealants that are out there. It's definitely not as bad as that one wipe on ceramic coating we tried. So there are definitely worse products and there's definitely better products. So let's see if wiping it in did anything, if it killed the rest of it. And it did, and I'll soap it up. So if I were to, I think if I were to have taken, if I were to, like the torture test of yesteryear of wiping in the products right away, if I would have wiped in a product right away, this product would have probably died on an iron remover. So it's degrading with a pH neutral soap, which is not ideal, and then it's dying with a wipe in. After going through a couple rounds, yeah, you're gonna get two, two to maybe three months max protection if you don't top it with anything. There you go, that is a reset panel. So again, not a terrible product, probably not the best paint protectant you could put on your car, but not the absolute worst, it's just so-so. So with that, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Don't forget to check out my latest video on all different types of paint protection, everything from a wipe-on coating to a spray and rinse product to everything in between, but I give this product like a four or five out of 10, how about that? So uh, with that, hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'll catch you on the next one, see ya.